Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Roots and Refuge Farm. If you're brand new here, my name is Jess and this is not my typical content. Just to preface this video, uh, this is gonna be a little different than what I usually do. This is just gonna be a sit and chat uh, because a lot of you have noticed lately that I've lost about 30 pounds in the last few months and I've had a lot of questions about that and I've briefly touched on it a couple of times, but I wanted to kind of just chat about health and diet and just some personal things I've been going through and some of the solutions I've found that, I mean, I'm just getting asked a lot of questions about this. So I'm just going to sit down and chat about this. Um, the nature of the health issues that I've had is somewhat private. Um, and I haven't always gone into depth because obviously I don't owe that information to anybody, but kind of for a backstory, I was really, um, I was really sick when I was a kid. I had some issues with my urinary tract that were very ongoing that actually I experienced just kind of a miraculous healing of when I was about 18, 19, somewhere in there. Um, really cool story. And I've shared that story before, but through a childhood of being incredibly sick in such a private area for a, you know, a little girl, especially through like the eighties and nineties where even like, I think that the people, the medical professionals that kind of handled me though, they had the best of intentions. I don't know that people really understood as much then as they do now as kind of the lasting emotional effects of some of that stuff. And I had a lot of trauma as far as like medical trauma goes. Um, and I was just, I was just really sick. Like I missed out on a lot whenever I was a kid and I lived kind of with this fear of like, you'll never be able to have children and you know, your life will not be normal. I was told multiple times that I would be on dialysis by the time I was 30 and like some different things like that. And then I experienced this amazing, um, really healing that was medically documented, like a cool thing whenever I was a young woman. And I was well for a while. And then some years later, I started to have some issues that were in the same region, but were different. And um, because of kind of the medical trauma that I had and the feeling of talking to doctors and not being heard for a very long time as a young person, I had a lot of hesitancy as an adult to kind of go back the route of medicine. And I tried in my early 20s to get some issues resolved because I was having a lot of problems with my urinary tract as well as just my digestive tract with my reproductive organs. Like I was just having a lot of issues. To be completely frank, now, 15 years later, I've had a couple of go rounds of trying to go through like Western conventional medicine, getting exhausted by having just kind of a run around, not feeling listened to, getting tons and tons of tests and no answers. And the first time this happened was in 2008. I kind of went down and exhausted that route and then turned to, to um, holistic remedies and found some relief and honestly I've just dealt with the fact that I lived in a lot of pain. Basically when we moved here in 2021 we moved to South Carolina and I don't know if it was the stress of that move but things kind of came to a pinnacle where I couldn't ignore them anymore. I was dealing with just almost chronic urinary tract infections. I mean, almost constant urinary tract infections. They were chronic, they were almost constant. Um, as well as just a lot of pain and dysfunction. And I started down the route of going to a doctor, being referred to a specialist, getting tons of invasive procedures. This was all last winter. And essentially, I didn't have a lot of faith in that route because it had failed to give me solution in the past, but I wanted to have faith in it and um, ultimately kind of decided I'm going to go and do what the doctors say. And I ended up taking a lot of antibiotics, which I, I knew weren't good to take. I knew how detrimental antibiotics were, but I also really wanted a solution and really wanted to just do what the doctor said. And, um, took lots of antibiotics for about a year and you guys have noticed, you know, over last winter and through the spring and into the summer 
that I just wasn't really myself. I just, I, I felt really bad. Um, I just had these chronic infections that would come back as soon as the antibiotics ended. And then of course, antibiotics just completely wipe you out. I couldn't be in the sunshine a lot. There were just a lot of different things that it was affecting me. And then in September, I had um, an autoimmune response where basically I recovered in this terrible rash. Now during that time, I still shot some videos. You guys did not see the worst of that. And I'll put some photos up on the screen of kind of what that looked like. It was a, it was a rash that covered my entire body. Um, it caused a lot of swelling. I was having a lot of joint pain. I was just having this response. And it was more than just a, an, an eczema response. It was more than just a rash. It was my body was attacking itself. And I knew because this came on basically when I started a new round of like really strong antibiotics. I kind of hit that point of desperation of like something's got to give. I got to do something that's different. And a friend of mine referred me to a functional medicine um, person who basically is like a health coach that does um, online meetings, kind of helps guide you through some different things. I can share her website. I don't know what her availability is, but she's really helped me a lot. And I uh, started to meet with her, her name's Kelly, and started kind of the process of what she calls clearing the muddy waters, which is basically eliminating a lot of things to kind of get to a blank slate and maybe find out what is going on. My, my skin being broken out like that, it, with all the pain I've had, I mean, I've had a lot of internal pain. I've had a lot of pain that nobody could see. I've actually lived in so much pain that I'm actually dealing with like, it's almost like PTSD from that now. Like when you live in so much chronic pain and then it goes away, just the instances where for a moment you have like a twinge of pain, you're like, oh my God, is it coming back? You know, it's, it's, it's awful and it messes with you mentally. It really, really chronic pain really messes with your, your whole personality. It really does. Uh, but when my skin broke out like that, it was, it was something I could no longer just push through. Very resilient person, very driven, very focused. And I, when people are like, well, why didn't you take it easy? I really didn't realize that it was as bad as it was. To be completely honest, I, all the years that I'm saying, man, I've been living in a lot of dysfunction and pain for a lot of years. I didn't actually know how bad it was because it had just gotten slowly worse and worse and worse. And frankly, I'm busy with my dream life. I didn't, I just, I just didn't know. And the skin thing now I can look at with a massive gratitude. I really thank God for allowing things to come to a head in a way that I had to take care of me. You know, everybody else around me, like Jeremiah was amazing through that. And he realized then how sick I'd been. He didn't know because I didn't, I didn't know. And the skin thing kind of brought it up where everybody knew. And it was something that was just not gonna be ignored. So I had reached out, um, have a f group of girlfriends in that group. Many of them have dealt with health issues. You know many of them through social media and having YouTube channels and stuff. And, you know, we text each other a lot. We're in this text group and get together, you know, occasionally and all hang out. And uh, my friend Lorraine, she and her husband Jason have a channel called So The Land. And when I was reaching out to them, sharing those pictures, being like, I don't, you know, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm at my wits end. Obviously, what I'm doing is making things very much worse. Uh, and I, I don't know what to do. And I've tried to do all the natural remedies. I've tried all this stuff, but like, nothing's getting better. And Lorraine had a lot of compassion because she had walked with her husband Jason through him having kind of, I think it was autoimmune, like a psoriasis outbreak where he was having just like this crazy making skin rash. And she really understood like how bad it was because when your skin is broken out like that and you're itching all over and you can't, you know, you're not supposed to scratch it. And it is so, it's maddening. Um, and you can't sleep. It's very difficult to have relief. Through that time, I was spending hours soaking in 
like oatmeal baths, um, just trying to not itch all over. And I would, as soon as I would get out of the bath, it would just start to, within 15 minutes, it would just be burning and itching. I would spend, I think there were days that I spent like six to seven hours in the bathtub because I was just trying to feel relief. And Lorraine understood that. And she actually ended up sharing with me that the thing that had brought Jason the most relief was to go on the carnivore diet, which of course our friend Justin had been doing the carnivore diet for a long time and had gotten a lot of relief from his autoimmune stuff um, or from Lyme disease. And then we, I've read other people doing this diet. I had never once considered it. I'd always been like, that's crazy. Just eating meat, like that can't possibly be good. But I was so desperate at this point and I was having, people were sending me GAPS diet and people were sending me AIP and people were sending me, try this, try that, try this, try that. And frankly, I was spending seven hours a day in the bathtub. Like the idea of learning like a whole new way of eating and reading labels and doing recipes and all that stuff. I, I couldn't even process. I was literally not, I, I was having a hard time holding a conversation because I was sleeping so little. And when Lorraine said something about carnivore, I was like, well, I've got meat. You know, we have freezers full of meat. We raise our meat. So therefore we, you know, we will process a hundred chickens at a time. We'll process multiple hogs at a time. Like I've got meat. I started carnivore the next morning. I mean, having done little to no research, just needing something to alleviate the excruciating pain that I was in. About a week, the new outbreak stopped. So when I started carnivore, losing weight was like nowhere on my grid. That wasn't even anything that I was thinking about. I was just trying to get my skin to stop hurting. But um, obviously when you go to eating just meat, you're dropping dairy and grains and sugar and sweets and all of that sort of stuff. Um, all the carbs, all the biscuits, all of the pancakes and the different things that were just kind of a regular part of my diet. So within a week or so of starting carnivore, the new skin outbreaks stopped. I started losing weight really fast. It was bewildering because I wasn't, that wasn't my goal. And within a month of doing like pretty strict carnivore, I think I lost 20 pounds or something like that. And of course I was, at that point I had done a lot of research. I was trying to round it out and make sure I was doing what I needed to show. I started taking supplements and stuff like that. And at that point I was working with, with Kelly, the functional health coach. And um, I decided to start kind of reintroducing some things, but left all dairy all grains and all sugar just off the table. So I reintroduced some fruit. I reintroduced like some veggies and tried different things. I did sort of an AIP diet for a little while. If you've ever heard of that autoimmune paleo, if you look that up, it's one that's often suggested for a person who's having some sort of autoimmune issue uh, to kind of just do, it's an elimination diet. So it cuts out a lot of the things that cause inflammation. So I did that for a while and uh, you know, the holidays came around and I sort of, you know, just cooking Thanksgiving stuff, I kind of tasted some of the things that were off limits and just almost immediately started to break out again. And so I was like, okay, those really have to be off limits. Uh, in November, I actually ended up going back to my regular doctor because I had been on that, ex you know, elimination diet and had cut all of those things out for those months. It was like I realized I could feel parts of my body that had before just all been kind of swollen, inflamed, and painful. And in cutting out the dairy and the grains and the sugar, I just, I didn't realize how much inflammation I had. I didn't realize how bad my joints hurt. I didn't realize how much my neck hurt and um, how much bloating and swelling that I just dealt with. I just thought it was normal. I honestly just thought, well, I'm almost 40. Like, this is just normal for me. And it wasn't actually, it was, it was 100% in my diet and I just didn't know. And I ended up going back to my doctor and basically telling them, I know you keep treating me for urinary tract infections, but I think those are secondary. There's gotta be something else going on in that general region. So just test me for anything else. And 
Um, they actually treated me for an infection in my uterus and in my digestive tract. And I still don't have like solid answers because they've tested me for all the things that can cause that and it's all been negative. Um, I still don't actually have answers, but I know that when they treated me for that, literally I, Maya would find me just crying because I couldn't believe how much better I felt. And that's when it started to hit me how much pain and how much sickness I had been dealing with for how long. I mean, literally it's been years of being hindered and I didn't know. And that, it, I, once I realized I was devastated for myself. I mean, truly, I was I was apologizing to Maya. I'm like, God, you've been, I've, I don't think I've been completely whole our entire marriage. And it was just like this heartbreaking realization while also completely, I mean, crazy thankful to have the resolve. So that was in November. Um, since then, I've still dealt with kind of a little bit of things trying to crop back up, but have been heavily focusing, you know, through the help of, you know, functional medicine and supplements to rebuild my gut health. Uh, that's been a big thing. Um, I did some tests to kind of see where my gut actually was. And I'll, Kelly, whenever we were going through my test, she was like, you know, this is an incredible testament to your lifestyle that you live on a farm because with as much medicine as you've consumed, your gut should be way worse than it is. She's like, I, I'm shocked at how, I'm shocked at how much better it is than I expected it to be. But obviously like the farm life and being so in contact with the soil and animals and just so much biodiversity essentially, um, I think it made a massive difference in my health overall. But now it's February and I've been doing regular supplements, immune support, trying to rebuild gut health um, and still maintaining that really strict diet. Um, at the beginning of January, because through the holidays, I had kind of, well, I'm going to try this a little bit. Here's a little bit of sugar, you know, tasting a little bit of dairy, a little bit of things, and realizing that that was still very much negatively affecting me. I uh, went back in January onto kind of a modified carnivore that was largely, I think, 80% carnivore and then um i did not do dairy some people will do dairy with it but i didn't because i'm having a reaction to that so you know i have stinking home dairy with jersey cows but it you know it is what it is i don't want to feel bad and then 20 percent of basically um like things like squash or sweet potatoes or fruit things that are typically low in inflammation um, I have tried some like tomato products and peppers like nightshades and thankfully I do not seem to have any sort of inflammation with those. So I'm moving ahead on planting all of those things in my garden. I, was, I wasn't sure there for a little while if I was even going to be able to eat nightshades again because I had to cut them out for a while. But those don't seem to bother me. Uh, their def grains definitely are bothering me. The And dairy is definitely bothering me. And, you know, like I'm not even... With grains bothering me, I'm not even like testing gluten at this point because I know that that was something that was causing a lot of inflammation. But that's kind of what I've been doing and, and why. I can't tell you this was my diagnosis. This is exactly what happened because I have not received anything like that. I have, there has not been like an aha light bulb moment of this is what you were dealing with and this is how to fix it and it'll never come back. I have, you know, been told that there's a good chance if I get my gut back in good health and get my immune system back in good health and kind of rebuild the damage that all of the antibiotics did and that the chronic infection for so long did because essentially like I have like tons of scar tissue in my bladder and then like I just have a lot of scar tissue. Um, and that, I believe, and what I've been told is, is that getting those things healed, you know, a couple years down the road, we do have A2, A2 pasture dairy. Like we, I could likely reintroduce that, especially starting with like fermented things like kefir, yogurt, and different things like that. But right now it's just not, 
something that I need to do. It's causing too much inflammation. And that's what I've been doing. And I, I have actually been going to a gym. That was something that I, I mentioned. And somebody's like, hold on, don't you get enough workout on the farm? Essentially, when I started feeling so much better, I had all this energy and I had this mobility that I literally have not had in years. I have really struggled. Like I've really had to push through at times to do things like garden, but I was resilient and bullheaded and determined to do it. And then all of a sudden I feel so much better and this inflammation is gone and this infection is gone. And I'm realizing how hindered I've been and I'm realizing how much better I feel. And I didn't want to get comfortable in feeling better and then I have to get over the hump of my own discomfort to like start using my body. So this was in like November. Of course, we're not really doing much gardening. It's the middle of winter. And I decided I was gonna start going to the gym. So I joined a gym here in Batesburg called Strong Body. And uh, they have like a semi-private training program. I've never gone to a gym in my life. I just thought, I'm gonna do this for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see because I thought that an almost 40 year old body felt like it was just in pain all the time. I thought that what I was dealing with was normal. And now that I realize that it's not, and I'm gotten rid of all this inflammation and infection, I want to see what my almost 40 year old body can do. And so I, um, I started going twice a week to the gym. That's been hugely empowering to me. Uh, to just push myself and learn to get over discomfort in a different way rather than pushing through pain to be productive, uh, pushing through discomfort to get stronger. Um, I, you know, I don't have enough time to really make it a daily thing by any means, but I just go twice a week for an hour each time and learn these different things. And I, I love that. And I, I feel really empowered. I feel really good. Um, when people are like, hey, I'm dealing with eczema. What did you do? It's hard. It was a very much a process and a strong commitment to healing that I had to make for a long term. You know, when people have been messaging me, you look great, you've lost so much weight, what did you do? I really just decided that I w wasn't, upon realizing, one, that I couldn't ignore it anymore, that I was going to have to deal with it. That happened when my skin blew up, as I say. That made the diet change. And then on the other side of making the diet change and then really being able to hear my body because of eliminating so much inflammation, that revealed the infection that allowed the infection to be treated actually. And once that was treated, that's when I realized how bad it had been. And once that happened, it honestly just made me think, Oh my God, like I have an opportunity to have a health and a, in overall f feeling better in my life than I realized was even possible. And I don't want to waste that. And I think that's really strengthened me to kind of look at this as a long haul thing and saying, okay, I'm going to eat this really restricted diet for the next couple years and maybe even longer than that. And I'm going to be okay with it because I feel strong and well. I'm not exhausted. I'm not dragging. My, I was going to the chiropractor every two weeks. I had so much inflammation in my body that every time I went, like the chiropractor could not get my hips to get into alignment. And well, after I went through this stuff that basically alleviated the inflammation and the infection, the first time I went to the chiropractor after that, she adjusted my back and she said, what's different? Your whole, your body feels like a completely different person. Like what happened here? And things like that have really been encouraging to me. And it gives me the strength because eating such a restricted diet is very difficult. It's really changed the way that I cook. Um, because I'm not making, I mean, like, I'm largely cooking gluten-free for my family, still making some regular bread and stuff like that for my kids. I started toying around with gluten-free sourdough, and so far it's still kind of weird, but a lot of gluten-free stuff is from what I'm finding. <laughs> um, I don't know. I can't, I'm, I'm determined to get better at that. It's just going to take some time. But it's, it's been really difficult. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Making a massive dietary change like that is, it's socially difficult. Uh, going out to eat is hard. We, you know, like we go out with friends and stuff like that. And I, 
I mean, I have taken my own food to multiple things or I have to order like really sparsely if we go to restaurants and ask a billion questions about how they cook things or eat before I go. But I think I hit enough of a rock bottom. It just kind of made it where I could handle doing that because you get to a point where you're in enough pain and then you realize how much pain you've been in and it kind of just makes you go, I don't want to live like that. I don't, I don't want to live with my body in dysfunction. I don't, I don't want to be in pain. I would, I would rather give up the, the food that I like eating than live like that. And so, yeah, it's, it's been a process. Um, it's not a simple answer, but I am getting lots and lots of questions about it because people have noticed. I think at this point, I've lost something like 30. If I remember where I was when I started, I think I've lost 36 pounds t total. Um, I've gained some of... I've gained, I'd lost more and gained some back in muscle because I've been getting body scans done at the gym and stuff like that. And like, I have gained muscle mass. So that's, a, that's a pretty big drastic weight loss. I would say for somebody my size, I mean, that's a lot. I think that's pretty drastic weight loss for anybody, but I mean, it was a significant amount of my body mass that I've lost, but overall that hasn't been my goal. My goal has been health and I definitely feel like I'm in a place of much better health than I was. I feel like my skin looks clearer. I feel like my eyes look brighter. Um, just overall, like I said, the inflammation being gone and, and realizing, oh, my body can function differently than it has been. It's way better. And that's not an easy, an easy answer and it hasn't been an easy process. But if you're in a place where you're needing to make a drastic change, um, I hope that it's encouraging to you because I wasn't looking to make a drastic change. I just hit the rock bottom where it demanded it. Um, I hit the point of desperation that I was willing to do anything. It didn't matter how drastic it was. I wish it hadn't taken that for me. Like I wish I had listened to my body before and done what it needed before. But I just, like I said, I don't, I don't know that I was able to see it clearly. And when I did, I'm glad that Jeremiah was in support and, and got behind me and that we both um, began to address some health things that needed to be addressed. And I hope that it lends to longevity, you know, like that I'll have a, a longer life and a happier life, a healthier life, and ultimately a more productive life. But that's not really why. But just feeling better is, is nice. So yeah, I wanted to share that because I thought maybe it would help people. Um, I know it's kind of a weird thing to sit down and put a video on the internet about and I don't, I'm so far from an expert, you know, as far as nutritionary stuff, people I've had, I've shared a couple times what I was doing that was making me so much better. And I've had people pipe up and be like, well, you need to stop eating animal products and do this. I'm like, listen, like I, I get it that people have things that have worked for them. This has obviously worked for me. Um, I was not functional seven months ago. I was in a tremendous amount of pain. I was I, truly like my body was not functioning the way that it was supposed to. And um, that became extremely apparent at the beginning of September. And since then, this has been working for me. And so I'm going to continue down this road until I have a, a real reason to do something different. Um, and yeah, if you are dealing with something like this, I, I hope that maybe this will encourage you to do whatever is necessary to take care of yourself, whatever that is, whatever route that is. It's been worth it for me because I have had more progress towards health in five months of that route than I had in the 15 years prior to that. I, this issue that I was having with my reproductive tract and all that different stuff, I think that it's been going on since six, since Asher was six months old and he's about to turn 16. I'm pretty sure that a lot of the issues that I've been having since then have been from then. And so I, I think when it started, I don't know this for sure, but I think that when that infection was introduced was when I had an IUD placed um, after I had Asher. It was it was about six weeks after that I started having issues. I can't prove that. I don't know for sure. Um, but when I look back on, on the progression of things as I remember them, that's when I started having issues that I'd never had before with all my history of urinary tract stuff. That was when things changed. And those issues have just gotten increasingly worse since then. And then finally, in treating that infection, um, I started getting so much better. And I'm, I'm still recovering. I'm still learning how to take care of myself. 
but I am committed to that long haul. And I appreciate all the compliments. I feel good. Um, I'm glad that you guys think that I look good. I, it does make me feel nice, but overall, I just feel so much better and so much stronger and more able that, um, I mean, I'm, the process has been very, very hard, but I can at this point be very thankful for it because it's led me to this point. I'm so excited to garden this year. I've been out there trimming stuff and lifting things and squatting and picking things up and like nothing hurts. It just, I feel strong and uh, man, that is so stinking encouraging to look forward to a year in the garden where I don't have to just fight so hard to overcome the physical boundaries that I'm dealing with. So that's, it. that's awesome. So that's what I, I wanted to just do this video to share that with you. I don't know if it'll be helpful to anybody. Hopefully, if, if nothing else, it'll uh, scratch the is, itch of curiosity that some of you have had wondering what the heck has been going on with me. Some people have been like, hey, you're losing too much weight. I'm actually not seeking to lose weight. I'm fueling my body very well. Um, I'm eating a good deal. I'm just eating things that are very fueling and when you take away dairy, sugar, and car or grains, I mean that takes away a lot of the stuff that would be bad for you. You know, like you're not eating any candy or baked goods or sweets or yeah, ice cream. Like none of it. Like it's all gone. And so it you know, I could eat an apple now and it's like a, a revelation of how delicious it is. <laughs> I haven't had any of the other stuff for a while. So um, yeah, that's that's what's been going on. Actually looking at the overall health of your body um, versus trying to just cover the symptoms of an issue, like really getting to the root of the state of your health, I think is super important. And that's what we've been doing. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today and listening to this unusual bit of content. We'll be back to gardening and the like in the next video. I bless you guys until next time.